Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane! <laughs> Hello world, I'm Maya Sendermeyer, and I would like to welcome you to the latest episode of my vlog series. So far, I have been able to share my experiences on what it's like to live on the autistic spectrum, or rather have Asperger's Syndrome. A second thing that I will do is provide uh, my two cents on uh, what's going on with autism in the media. And a third area entails uh, providing tips and advice for those of you who are on the spectrum. I will also reach out to your friends, family members, peers, mentors, educators, employers, and anybody who is inside the autistic community. And finally, I will cover topics on things that I'm passionate about, along with sharing the day in the life of Maya Sendermeyer. So check it out. Hey, how are you doing over there? Looks like you're content. You look just like the chess I have. Applejack was over there and she was sitting up and she reminded me of the Cheshire Cat and she was giving me the slow blink, which is a common sign that a cat loves you, you know, where they go like this. That's a sign that they're content, that's a sign that they really love you. And so, to me, that's just a really beautiful sight and that is one of my favorite things that a cat does. And I know that AJ truly loves me and I love her in return. In fact, she and I had spent the last couple of nights together watching some Netflix and uh, we had a chance to uh, sit on the couch and she got some really good petting time in. I've also had a chance to take a lot of pictures on her now that I have this iPhone, I have pictures of her on her. And I've been able to uh, follow this group on Facebook called the Ginger Cat Gang. And I've been able to uh, post those pictures online. And there's another cat on there that looks just like her. And his name is Milkbone. And the woman that posts it, she always uh, writes these little stories and puts pictures on him. And she says, Milkbone, my favorite nephew. And then there are quite a few other celebrities in that uh, group alone. And so, I've been trying to make Applejack a celebrity of her own. So, anyway, she's over there and she's snuggling on the couch. But, what else am I up to today? So, I just am so happy that I have this iPhone. I love this picture and I absolutely love it that I can use my selfie stick again. Because with my uh, little Samsung Galaxy J1, I would try to plug it into this uh, selfie stick, right? And then it would just shut the phone down and I would get this uh, really, really, really scripted message that a computer programmer could only read. So that was really frustrating. And then I would have to hold it up at like this and then I would have the, uh, the portrait mode where the whole bigger picture was cut off. So what I like about this phone and especially since I can tip it on my side is I get a better picture of uh, what my life is like and you get a better picture. In fact, I think I'm going to uh, redo the intro at some point. I mean, uh, everything is going to be the same with the Hello World and then the introduction, but I want my vlogs to be as professional as possible. And then the other thing I wanted to get, let you guys know is that uh, uh, I want, I have a brand I'd like to build up and I, I have some goals I'd like to meet. And I want to reach as many people as possible. And I want to follow Casey Neistat's mentality with the do what you can't. And what that means is uh, if you can't do something really big, like uh, be on a talk show, you can take a camera and a couch like I'm sitting on now and uh, you can create your own talk show. And that's what I've been doing for the past five years in addition to my day in the life type blogging, which I got from Casey Neistat himself. So without further delay, please click up here in the upper right hand corner. This is a, a short video called Do What You Can't. It's all about uh, putting your work out there and showing YouTube all the skills and all the gifts that you have. And for me, I happen to have a, a really good gift in talking. And it wasn't always, uh, a good thing because uh, I talk too much and I have a tendency to monopolize the conversation 
But if I put my talking to good use and I uh, can learn how to speak in the right way, I can talk right here on this camera. So anyway, uh, what am I up to at the moment? So I have been texting a friend. I am going uh, up to her place tomorrow night for uh, Christmas dinner. Even though, again, I don't really celebrate Christmas, but uh, I had just planned to go this year. And um, I was uh, over at her place for Thanksgiving. And then she's coming over next week for a grand New Year's party that I'm throwing. And I'm going to do a 80s New Year's uh, theme party. So please be sure to stay tuned with that. I would absolutely love to uh, shoot a vlog about that party and I'd like to show footage of what that looks like. So again, stay tuned. But anyway, I'm going to get down to business and talk about things related to autism. And what I'd like to do is provide tips and, vi uh, tips and advice for those of you who are on the spectrum or who are autistic or prefer to say Asperger's. Because right now, uh, there is a whole slew of self-advocates who are autistic and they have been using their autism as an identity and they've been uh, very proud of who they are. And I think it's fine because uh, there's two things that you have to realize. There's self-awareness and self-acceptance. And that's where autism awareness and autism acceptance come into play and they intertwine with each other. But one of the things that I'm concerned about is that the self-advocates are so stuck on the labels that they're forgetting the rest of who they are. Like those, those in ASAN, they're a lot of really skilled and talented people. Like some of those people are attorneys, like Autistic Hoya, Lydia Brown. They are an attorney. There is more to them than just autism. Uh, they are also a student at uh, Brown University, and they were also they're also a student at Harvard University, and they are doing all these amazing things. Like in my case, sure I'm autistic or an Aspie, but I'm a homeowner. I am a cat owner. I am an undergraduate student. I am a researcher and a project assistant. I'm a vlogger and a writer, and. I just want to be remembered for those things, not really for the fact that I'm autistic because I'm learning that when I let somebody know that I'm autistic, they tend to focus on the label and they tend to focus on the negative traits and the stereotypes. Like I have limited interests. So they approach me like I'm an alien and they talk to me like I'm some little kid and they have a very hard time accepting me or they don't know how to approach me. And see, those are some of the things I'm really concerned about. Um, what I, again, I, what I want to be seen are for my skills and for my talents. And, sh and I want people to accept it that yes, I do things differently, that I flap my hands or that I rock back and forth or that I have to cover my ears. But I don't want people to just focus on autism and the disability and how they can change me because they don't understand. What I want them to see me for is uh, for Maya, not for autism. And I, that's what I want you as autistics to remember. Lydia, Amethyst, whoever some of you self-advocates are, Ari Neiman even. You need to be seen as Ari and Lydia and Amethyst. And again, whoever else you are. You need to be seen as cat lovers and writers and whether or not you like to play roller derby. You need to be seen as those types of people, not as autistics. I mean, sure, you're different, but don't let that ruin your life and don't let that define you. So anyway, I'm out of time. If you like what I'm doing, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. Until next time, I'm Maya Sundermeyer and I'm signing off now.